to Tendai's wheelhouse. And that, of course, is the housing market. A couple of different things to talk about here. Let's start with the idea that um, we are likely not going to see the same type of housing crisis that we saw the last time around when we had an economic downturn. But we could see one that is spurred by a rent crisis. This is according to a Wall Street Journal story today that sort of examined this phenomenon that when we get the national eviction ban that it starts to wear off, and it also is happening in some states and cities, that you then could have um, this wave of evictions and people maybe getting kicked out and what kind of a ripple effect is that going to have? Um, Tendai, what's your analysis? Well, how bad is this going to be? Uh, yeah, so it has a potential to be pretty bad uh, if we don't get some actions to try and mitigate it, right? Um, so, you know, the, the estimates vary, right? Somewhere between 20 and 40 million people are under rental stress right now uh, because they've lost their income. Uh, they got some replacement income from the government earlier in the year, but now without a second stimulus program, uh, they, you know, don't have quite enough income to meet their rental payments. Uh, now, there's been national moratoriums. There's been a lot of local moratoriums on uh, rental evictions, uh, but the kind of delinquency process on rentals uh, can still continue. Uh, so the fear is once a lot of these moratoriums kind of end in January, uh, that you could face you know, millions of people at risk uh, of eviction. So I'll say at risk of eviction, not necessarily getting evicted, uh, because eviction in many places is a legal process. Um, I don't know that the courts have the capacity to evict, you know, 10, 15, 20 million people, uh, but certainly it creates a lot of stress for those people and for those families uh, not knowing, you know, not being secure uh, in their housing. Tent, I, I, I'm curious, and I'm looking at the Wall Street Journal article on my other computer screen in which they cite the Philadelphia Federal Reserve Bank, uh, the, that the outstanding rent debt is anywhere from $7.2 billion now to potentially $70 billion without further stimulus. I can't believe I'm about to say 70 billion doesn't sound like a lot of money for the federal government, which can borrow as much as it cares to. But is the solution to just throw 70 billion at landlords? Because that would also help, you know, upstream and downstream as opposed to evicting people. Uh, yeah, I think certainly you have to have some kind of uh, cash infusion. I'm not sure where uh, in the chain uh, you would you would put it in. Uh, maybe it is to landlords. Because uh, the you know the further the way that chain goes is that the landlord has a mortgage, uh, they have to pay that mortgage. Uh, if they miss on that mortgage, uh, then you know you get into a, a mortgage crisis driven by uh, rental homes. Uh, if landlords suddenly have to let's say liquidate um, a lot of rental property, you can actually start to you know put a damper on house prices, which we just saw this morning. Uh, are up pretty strongly in the case Schiller. So it can actually transfer from the rental market into the owner-owned occupied housing market via uh, this mortgage transmission uh, from landlords. Tendai, I want to pick up on what you were saying about home price gains, because you're referring to that case Schiller um, home price index that came out this morning. It showed the biggest home price gains in August in more than two years. In the 10 city composite, it was up 4.7% year over year. In uh, the 20 city, it was up 5.2%. Paired with what we're talking about with the rental market, does this support the idea that not only do you have a K-shaped recovery in the broader economy, but you have it in the housing market too, and it's pretty acute. Uh, no, it does not. Uh, oh, sorry, you said K-shaped. Oh, yeah, I would agree with uh, with K-shaped. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think there's a, a bifurcation of the economy uh, in many facets. Uh, the housing market, though, is a little bit unusual. We do have a strong and strengthening housing market. There is this weird seasonally effect thing that's going on, though. Uh, so essentially what happens is that uh, based on where, where sales and activity typically occurs during the year, certain data in the year is kind of bumped up and other data is kind of bumped down so that you can compare it like apples to apples throughout the year. Now, a lot of activity that would have happened in the spring is happening now. Typically in the spring, that data is bumped down. Typically now, that data is bumped up. So if you look at some of the metrics, uh, some of the month-to-month -month gains that we've been seeing are entirely due to seasonal factors. Uh, now, having said that, we are seeing year-over-year -year gains as well. So the housing market is strong, but it's not quite as strong as some of the headline data would suggest because of this distortion from seasonal factors.